Hi, now is the time to go for some more complex transactions. And when I say complex transactions, I do not mean difficult. It's just that the number of accounts involved are going to be more than two. So three or four accounts can be involved in some of the transactions and we may need to write a combined journal entry. So in this video, we're going to look at uh, a bunch of transactions where uh, you know such cases multiple accounts will be involved let us get started <clears throat> the first transaction says fa limited financial accounting limited i've created a new company for you fa limited purchased a motor vehicle uh, 5000 cash and 15000 on bank loan so you know it is going to happen that you do a down payment for purchase of an asset and then there is some loan which is uh, taken from a financial institution, how do we write such journal entries? And you notice that I have uh, removed that step-by-step -step template from the slide now. So I'm just going to jump on to how I write the journal entry. Uh, and of course, we'll you know do discussion on how, how all of that was worked out. So you are purchasing a, a motor vehicle. Motor vehicle is an asset. An asset is coming into the business so debit what comes in so my general entry is going to say motor vehicle motor vehicle account is debit now the total value of motor vehicle is 5,000 plus 15,000 so 20,000 the value of the motor vehicle is 20,000 I paid for it in cash so cash is going out so again, an asset, it is going out, debit what comes in, credit what goes out. So I'm going to write to uh, cash account and the amount is 5,000. Now there's a balance of 15,000. All debits have equal credits. So debit was 20,000, credit has to be 20,000. So remaining 15,000 is my bank loan. So I'm going to write to bank loan account bank loan account and bank loan is a liability the liability is you know getting created here claims of business are going down which is shown as a credit here alternatively bank is a personal account uh, bank loan is a liability hence personal account bank loan represents banks claim on the business the bank in this case is a giver of the loan to the business debit the receiver credit the giver and this is how we write a complex uh, general entry. We did look at a couple of uh, general entries in the uh, tutorial video, 29th and 20, 30th general entry, where we had discount allowed and discount received. But now, you know, this is slightly more, uh, you know, this is different from that in the sense that now you're purchasing a vehicle, you are doing partial payments and so on. So you have to think about uh, such transactions now. Again, summarizing this transaction, motor vehicle is being purchased and two sources are being created here. Motor, motor vehicle uh, uh, gives rise to a new asset being generated. This is an asset that is uh, going out, going down, going up. And this is a new liability uh, which is going up. Liability is being created. Debits have equal credits. So the amount, total amount, uh, are equal on both the sides. Let's look at another transaction. The charge for the year for depreciation on office equipment owned by FA uh, Limited was calculated to be 4000 and office furniture 5000. So there are you know couple of uh, uh, asset items given to you. There is office equipment and office furniture and depreciation is being charged on both uh, the assets. We know the general entry for depreciation. The general entry is depreciation account debit. Depreciation account debit. And depreciation is charged on an asset. So the asset's name has to be written as well. So office equipment account and the other asset is furniture so furniture account here so the total depreciation being charged is 5000 plus 4000 9000 5000 depreciation is charged on office furniture 
and 4000 is being charged on office equipment so again multiple assets uh, are being you know depreciation is being charged on multiple assets and uh, a one a single account is being created for depreciation you could also segregate the depreciation in following way let me give you an alternative you could have depreciation depreciation on office equipment and you can have depreciation on office furniture and you could write them separately so office equipment has 4000 and you have 5000 for furniture to office equipment account and to furniture account so it's another way of keeping separate records if you want to look at what is the total depreciation on one of the assets then what do you do so you create a separate uh, account for depreciation on each of the assets and you can write them together rather than writing two separate journal entries which consumes more space you can write a combined journal entry which is called complex journal entry as well and you know this is how you write it and i'm not going through why i debited uh, some uh, accounts and why credited because all of that should be pretty clear to you uh, by now let's go on to the next transaction transaction 3 gross salaries for the company totaled 6000 5000 was paid in cash to the employees and 1000 was deducted as tds now some of you may be familiar with the concept of tds tds is tax deducted at source think of your companies if you are working uh, when you work for an organization this is the employee this is the company all right the employee provides services to the company and the company provides salary to the to the employee now in this picture there is government let me bring in government here the government has a rule which says all the employers, all the companies who have employees and who pay salaries to the employees, they are liable, government has a regulation, that you should deduct the tax. You should deduct the tax at source. What is source? Source is the company. Company is the source of salary to the individual. The individual is then supposed to pay taxes to the government. All right. Now, individual will pay taxes to the government later on, but government says if a company is paying salary to the company, uh, uh, to the individual, to the employee, then it is obvious that there will be some tax liability, some tax that the individual will have to pay at the end of the year. Now, we do not want to, you know, uh, let the government does not want to let all taxes be pending and paid at the end of the year. So, government says everybody has to pay the taxes as and when they get the salary. In, uh, so, enforcing that on individuals is difficult. So, they created a rule where they said the company will pay uh, tax when they pay salary to the individual. They will not pay them the full salary. They will deduct a percentage, typically 10% or depending upon what tax bracket you come in, they deduct a 10%, let's say, uh, salary uh, of yours, and that salary through a direct channel goes into government treasury, this TDS. This is called tax deducted at source by a company. And then in the at the end of the financial year, the individual can say, individual is given a uh, report that the company has deposited uh, 100 rupees as tax already on your behalf. And then you go to the, uh, you know, your website uh, where the tax is calculated. You go to income tax website or you go to your chartered accountant and you figure out what is my actual tax liability according to the taxation rates. And then it turns out that you have to pay 120 rupees as the tax. Well, 100 has already been paid. So you only pay the remaining taxes, which is 20. So government benefited in, a, in the way that they already received this 100. They did not have to wait for the end of the year. So government gets revenue that way. And also, you know, for the employee, uh, you don't have to worry about the end of financial year to pay 120 as tax. You only have to pay 20 because rest has been taken care of. 
anyways that was the concept of tds now this means the uh, in this process the company when it deducts the tds the tds has to be paid to the government so it's kind of a liability on the company the amount of tds that company keeps with itself has to be given to the government at certain point in time till that time this is a liability on the company so let us go to the transactions and try to generalize it so salaries are being paid we know when you pay the salary you say salary account debit now total salary to be paid is 6000 so that is the gross salary this is company's expense and this will be uh, paid through the bank account so you will write bank account 5000 all debits must have equal credit so where is the remaining 10 uh, 1000 the remaining 1000 is the liability of the business of fa uh, 205 limited so you are going to write the name of the liability which is tds account this tds uh, is due to be paid to the government now for the business salary expense is equal to 6000 the business uh, can the company can pay 6000 to the employee directly and only write to bank account but the government rule says only pay 5000 to the employees and pay uh, 1000 to the government by way of tds so right now tds is not being paid it was deducted deducted meaning company has kept it in a separate bank account uh, to be paid to the government when it is paid to the government, you can write another general entry, which is separate. So this is how you write another complex uh, transaction in the books of accounts. Okay, let's look at another transaction. Salaries, uh, salaries worth 6,000, 5,000 paid and 1,000 to be paid uh, in the next year. For a moment, I thought it's the same transaction. That's why I paused. So uh, let's write the uh, general entry. You have salaries, account, debit, total amount 6,000. This is the expense for the year. You have paid 5,000 in cash. So to bank account, oh, it says cash, but I'm assuming you know money goes through bank account. So just following that understanding, you paid 5,000. And 1000 will be paid in the next year. In the next year, so 1000 is the balance. You will pay it later. This becomes outstanding. It's a liability. Outstanding salaries account. What is happening here is 6000. We are following accrual principle here. Accrual principle says you used the services of the people in this year and you produced whatever goods and services and you generated revenue. According to uh, uh, the accrual principle, whether or not you paid this money, you have to recognize it as an expense. I'm also invoking the other principle, which is matching principle, which says you have to match, uh, you have to match the expenses of current year to the incomes of current year. And the accrual principle says that the expenses of current year are not only the expenses paid in cash, but even if not paid, even if they are due, you have to consider them as an expense. So that's why we are showing 6,000 as our total expense for the year or for the duration. And you are actually paying 5,000 and remaining 1,000 becomes a liability. Okay, uh, let's go on to another transaction. Purchased goods 1200 for prizes for competition uh, and you have paid for these goods in cash. The language on, the tran uh, on this transaction file is not very good but what is happening here is uh, you purchase goods 1200. The intention, the purpose is not resale. Purpose is not resale. The purpose is to give them away uh, uh, as prizes for some competition that you have. And let me remove this and you say purchase goods in cash. You've purchased goods and you've paid for it in cash is what this means. All right. So uh, how do we generalize this? Typically, you would do and let me write it here. You would say 
purchase account debit because I'm purchasing goods to bank account because I'm paying for it. It says cash, but again, we are assuming everything is happening through bank account. However, the purpose is not resale. If the purpose is not a resale, what is the purpose? The purpose is prices in the competition. Therefore, instead of purchase, we have, a, we have an expense. We have prices for competition. Prices for competition account debit and you pay for it in the, uh, through your bank account. 1200, 1200. Well, this was not a combined general entry, but you know, a different kind of ent uh, entry where the purchase of goods is, is being done uh, uh, with another intention. Uh, so you should not confuse it with the regular purchase account in which the goods to be resold uh, are written. Uh, so that is prices for competition. Now, again, should you, what should be the right name of this account? That depends upon, you know, business to business, you could give it an appropriate name. And what we have seen in, in case of uh, uh, the prescribed format of the financial statements, you have uh, an item called employee welfare expenses. All right, so you could say uh, employee welfare account expenses debit. I'm assuming the assumption is that these prizes are being given away in an annual, uh, you know, staff competition of sorts, you know, co-curricular uh, activities, uh, extra, you know, fun activities in the office or office parties. The idea is to, you know, incentivize staff to up their morale and so on. So, you know, you could club them under employee welfare expenses or it could go into uh, miscellaneous expenses account as well, whatever is the company's policy. But the idea is the name of the expense should be written instead of purchase account. Okay, let's go to another transaction. Telephone expenses were recorded earlier as 100. The entry should have been for 1000. Make an entry to correct this. Again, this is not a combined general entry, but I'm uh, trying to, uh, you know, get you to apply the concepts that you've learned uh, of debit and credit, increase in claims and so on. So what has happened here is telephone expenses were recorded. When you recorded the telephone expenses, you would have said telephone bill account debit 100 and you have paid for it through bank account so to bank account 100 however the entry should have been for 1000 you made a mistake how do you correct this mistake one way is you delete this entry and then <laughs> you write a new entry but without deleting this entry how would you make an adjustment for it so we are trying to make an adjustment so the adjustment is going to be as follows. You have to increase it by 900. You have to increase this by 900, right? Simple as that. In order to increase it by 900, what do you do? You have to increase the expenses. The expenses have to go up. When you rewrite the journal entry, you say telephone bills account debit and you write the remaining amount 900 and you say to bank account to bank account 900 all right what is the net effect so this is let's say part one part two the net effect the net effect is that the telephone bill has a debit of thousand in total at the end of it and the bank account has a credit of thousand in total which was what, what was expected to be done so just an application of you know how do you increase a debit in an account or decrease in a debit uh, decrease the debit in an account that's what we wanted to do in this transaction transaction 7 for goods sent to ram worth 500 the company received 300 and wrote off the bad debts of 200 so this sounds like a customer when you sold to this customer the general entry must have been Ram's account debit to sales. So this was 500 and this would have been done before. So by giving a debit to Ram's account you said we have a receivable. We have a receivable from Ram or this is a debtor this is an asset 500. And now you have received 300 from him. 
So when you receive the money, you're going to say bank account debit, but only 300. And you are writing off the remaining 200 as a bad debt. You have a new information which says he's not going to pay you. If he's not going to pay you, you have to first of all cancel uh, the debit effect that you have. This asset is not going to be recovered. You have recovered part of it, but remaining is not going to be recovered. So you have to first of all cancel this. How do you cancel it? You cancel it by creating an opposite treatment. Debit 500, you create a credit 500. So you're going to say to Ram's account 500. So now there is no more you know, recovery to be done from him. So we have cancelled that. However, against this, all debits must have equal credit. So credit is 600, debits are less. So remaining 200, 300 recovered, remaining 200 bad debt, a loss. All losses are debit. We're going to write bad debts account debit. So debits are 500, credits are 500. Uh, Ram's account has been adjusted because you no longer are going to recover this uh, money from him or you have recovered a part of uh, you know money from him. So in other way, as I say it, assume that this has been cancelled and this has been converted into cash and a loss. Okay, one last transaction. Uh, the company received 9000 cash for sale of a asset motor vehicle. The asset had a book value of 7500 at the beginning of the financial year. Now we're talking about a financial year beginning uh, and at this time the book value was 7500. A depreciation was charged. So I'm going to write depreciation here. Depreciation of 500 was charged which means the current book value the current book value of this asset motor vehicle is 7000 and it is being sold it is being uh, sold the sale price is 9000 sale price being higher than the book value means you are making a profit so profit on sale of an asset so you're making a profit here and we know profits, uh, all incomes and gains, so in, you know, profit is a gain, income and gains are credit. Let me write the journal entry here. You are selling, so you are getting the money. How much money are you getting? You are getting 9000. Money is coming into your bank account. So you are going to write bank account debit equal to 9000, which is being received. All right. Uh, the asset is going out. The asset is no longer exists. You don't have any claim on it. So you have to uh, cancel the debit that you would have given to asset when you purchased it. So you're going to write to motor, uh, motor vehicle, to motor vehicle account. And the value of the motor vehicle was only uh, uh, 7,500 at the beginning of the year, 7,500. The vehicle goes out, real account, asset goes out, debit word comes in credit word goes out so credit to motor vehicle uh, what else is happening is you're charging depreciation on the uh, vehicle when you charge depreciation depreciation is considered an expense so all expenses are debit so I'm going to write uh, depreciation account depreciation account a debit and 500 now debits and credits have to be equal. This is 9500, this is 7500, there's a 2000 which is missing. The 2000 is profit on sale. Uh, this is a gain, uh, this is nominal account, all incomes and gains are credit. So you give a credit to profit on sale of vehicle account and you're done. So this is a complex uh, general entry. There are four accounts involved at the same time. Uh, the money is being received, there is depreciation charged, you have to write off the asset. Uh, when I say write off, I mean you have to cancel it because you have sold it and you have to show that you have made a profit on its uh, sale. There could also be a loss on sale and you know let's uh, create that scenario as well. If instead of 9000, the selling price was 6000, then you would have made a loss of 1000. So profit 
or it could be a loss. What would you do then? So I'm going to write that entry as well. So bank account debit instead of 9000, you get only 6000 here. Depreciation remains the same. It does not change. So depreciation account debit 500 and the value of the motor vehicle remains the same. So motor vehicle account is credited 7500. All right. Now debits must have equal credit. So there is a balance of 1000 here. What is this 1000? This is a loss. All losses are debit. Nominal account, debit expenses and losses. So you write loss on sale of motor vehicle account. Again, this is a, a complex journal entry and this is how you write it. I've shown you both the cases where you make a profit on sale or loss on sale. It's possible that you sell the uh, uh, asset at the uh, current book value and there is no profit or loss. That's also possible. I challenge you to do that transaction on your own. All right, these were the transactions that I wanted you to uh, go through, some complex transactions. I'll see you in the next video with some more journal entries.